What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some boxing. Now, I just want to give my post-fight commentary and talk about today's fights. In the main event, you had Bernard Hopkins versus Tavares Cloud. Before I get into that, I want to briefly go over the Keith Thurman versus Jan Zevic. And that fight was pretty much a shutout. Keith Thurman being the prospect. He, I believe he got prospect of the year, HBO kept saying. Last year, he was the man to watch, prospect of the year. He's known for his, his thundering, punching power. And... He pretty much pitched a shutout, and this is good. I think the opponent they got is bringing him up at a good rate. He had someone um, like Quintana, his last bout at 154, and I thought that was going to be a, a tougher fight for him, but it looked like this was a tougher fight, and Styles makes fight, but I thought Quintana would just be a lot more awkward, but Zavik has a chin because he was taking some monster shots, and he still kept coming forward. He definitely put together a diligent effort, and at spots he looks better than others, but um, you would be scoring most likely off of improvement from previous rounds if you were to give him probably more than one or two rounds. If that, um, he just didn't do enough. He was outworked by Thurman. Thurman's punching power looked way more apparent and on display, and overall Thurman was too much. So, it was a good fight. I think fighters need to go through these types of tests. J. Leon Love's last opponent was a similar type of test. Um, just an aggressive fighter that's going to keep coming, keep coming. They could take shots and make you go the distance. And no matter how much punching power you have, a fighter has, there's always going to be someone who could take punishment. Um, there's a lot of fighters. Antonio Margarito, he was relentless. He was like the Terminator. He would get knocked down and keep coming back except for when Mosley um, destroyed him but there's fighters like that could take punch they could take punishment Arturo Gotti was one of them he could take a lot of punishment that other guys would have took a knee or went down for especially earlier in Gotti's career um but Keith Thurman was too much he's younger he's fresher legs and he hit harder and that was on display so he pretty much pitched a shutout I'm anxious to see uh, more of Thurman in the future there's some things that I like that he does and there's some things that I really want to see him against a, a more formidable opponent, somebody a little bit younger or with equal punching power or no notable punching power like a Marcos Maidana. This fight was actually supposed to happen, Marcos Maidana versus um, Thurman, and I believe Maidana pulled out, but I'd really be curious about that. At 147, Maidana is another hard hitter, and he seems to be improving with Robert Garcia. So maybe Maidana, maybe the winner of Maidana versus Josecito, I think um, Maidana would beat Josecito too. But I would be anxious to see how he does against a Keith Thurman. They both hit hard. And like I said, Maidana's been improving. So I'm anxious to see more of Keith Thurman. Sometimes he swings wild and he's going to learn as he gets in the fight more um, stiffer competition and more elite level fighters um, that some people are going to make you pay for those things. And... Again, I think he's, he might have some problems with someone who's technically gifted and has a good body attack and faster counter puncher because, he, like I said, he leaves himself open. But he's young. They're grooming him. He's, he's going through the, the fights that he needs to go through to get in them training, and I'm all for it. I think that's a good look, the, um, the fights that he's taken to this point. So keep up in the competition, and we'll see where he goes. But he's not a conventional, orthodox type fighter. But his style works for him. So until someone can shut him up or stop him, the rest remains to be seen. And in the main event, you had Bernard, the executioner Hopkins, versus Tavoris Cloud. And I was rooting for Hopkins. I just didn't know how Hopkins would look exactly, just being 48 years old. And his last performance was some time ago against Chad Dawson in the rematch. And in that rematch, he didn't look like, marquee Chad Dawson but Chad Dawson's also the taller fighter and Chad Dawson has an excellent jab he was fighting at 175 his comfortable weight and Chad Dawson is is a tough customer for anybody so anyway I didn't know exactly how Bernard Hopkins would look and he he actually even surprised me he looked a lot crisper a lot more accurate than I even expected for his age I mean it just goes to show you for some fighters with um, good fundamentals of boxing, um, good technical skills, good defense, some of that stuff, it just doesn't leave you. It may slow down, but it just doesn't leave you completely. 
um, Bernard Hopkins, Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. They're all examples of this. Um, Sergio Martinez even. So this fight was actually like Sergio Martinez versus Chavez Jr. But I think Sergio Martinez is a fighter that had a lot of animosity for Chavez Jr. And I'm not saying Bernard Hopkins didn't, but he was he was um, throwing a lot more with bad intentions. Where Bernard Hopkins is more um, a defensive fighter, and he's not going to leave himself open. And and again, that's why Sergio got caught later in the round. He was just um, fighting off of machismo in the 12th round and he got caught with something big um as far as Tavares Cloud I figured he would lose just because he's a stationary target he's easy to predict or easier and I just thought Bernard Hopkins would be too elusive but just dealing with the age him being 48 years old and um this guy has the potential to hit hard I didn't know what the outcome would be for a fact but Bernard Hopkins makes history again He's, he's amazing if you think about it. A lot of people, some people get mad and say he's boring to watch. But to me, I feel like if you're a boxing fan, if you're a dedicated boxing fan, you got to appreciate the different styles. And that's the style of boxing. Some people get mad and say he fights dirty. But if he's not getting points taken away from it, then what is he to do? I mean, Kodo, Pauli Malinaji, he's on record. It's a, probably, I think it's a video on YouTube that I've seen it. Pauli Malinaji said Miguel Cotto was the dirtiest fighter he's ever faced. But you know what? He doesn't have a track record for being dirty. It's just little tricks of the trade, little veteran tricks that Miguel Cotto, Bernard Hopkins, and people like that, Timothy Bradley, they employ. And again, if they're not being warned or stopped for it, then they're going to persist. And you have to find a way around it. And that's the fight game. Um, sometimes Bernard Hopkins uses his head. Sometimes he might use an elbow. Same thing with Timothy Bradley. Sometimes he comes in with his head low and whatever gets to you first, whether it's the punch or the head. Um, Miguel Cotto, sometimes he leans kind of with his body weight. It's the fight game. It's, it's not supposed to be, it's not like getting a pedicure. It's the fight game. It's the hurt game. They're in the hurt business. So you have to find a way to adapt and a way around that. There's all sorts of different styles. So as far as the people that just say Bernard Hopkins sucks and he's boring, to me, I don't think they're as much of fans just because you have to appreciate the different styles and there's boxing purists i like a, a fight like i seen tonight that's enjoyable to me the same as brandon rios versus mike alvarado obviously brandon rios for mike alvarado is more um entertaining because it's it's like people knocking their heads off but what i'm saying is you have to be able to appreciate both i'm not saying Brandon Reels for Mike Alvarado. Of, of course, we all like a slugfest because you never know what's going to happen and it makes it more predictable. But at the same time, I still can respect a defensive fight and a fight where the sweet science is being employed. And Bernard Hopkins, he definitely does that beautifully. Bernard Hopkins, he's a legend, definite um, Hall of Famer as soon as he retires. I think he said he's going to fight up until he's 50, which is ridiculous. But hey, if he's still fighting the toughest guys at 175, then, I mean, it is what it is. And you got to give him credit for his chin. I mean, he's in there with someone who has a, a good KO ratio and looks like they're younger and they look stronger and, and built bigger. And like I said, they have a high KO ratio. And the only significant, significant shot that Tavares Cloud landed to me was midway through the um, bout. He had this nice, nasty right and it backed up Bernard Hopkins. But he didn't really have that many destructive shots like I've seen in some of his previous fights um, with Tavares Cloud. And again, you can't be a stationary target with no head movement against a fighter like Bernard Hopkins. He's crafty. Um, they even made a comment. He was fighting off the ropes, and it was similar to James Tony. He looked beautiful against, like, against the ropes. Like, how are you on? And then I think Jim Lampley even said, how are you hiding or, or taking cover in defensive fighting on the inside how are you bobbing and weaving and slipping punches and again that's something bernard hopkins does beautifully and in the 90s growing up as a kid i seen a lot of fights roy jones jr was probably one of my favorites if not the favorite in the 90s other than mike tyson and i was way more of a roy jones jr fan than bernard hopkins but as you can see as time wears on these styles change and they evolve whereas you see Roy Jones Jr. where he is right now 
his style is only able to get him to a certain level, whereas Bernard Hopkins continues to fight almost pushing 50, and he still has success, Where whereas Roy Jones was a, be- a beautiful, excellent, gifted fighter, one, like one of my favorites of all time. But he did definitely rely on athleticism, and he relied on speed, power, and um, that kind of thing. So as soon as some of those things started to slow down, you've seen his career slow up and he started getting knocked out by people you know in his prime. He would have never, ever got knocked out by. Or, I mean, it'd be tough to imagine, but that's the fight game. Some people don't know when to hang it up. Bernard Hopkins, obviously, he doesn't have to hang it up because he's still beating feared punchers and people who who, who weigh 175 and much younger and all kinds of stuff. So... Props to Bernard Hopkins. Uh, He's definitely representing Philly the right way, showing that longevity can be achieved in the game of boxing. And not everyone goes out more or less like an Eric Morales or Arturo Gatti. There's a lot of fighters that just went out. Roy Jones Jr. is another one, Mike Tyson. A lot of fighters that just went out, and they didn't go out on their shield. They didn't go out on good terms. They let the game take them out. Um, Like I said, I can't even watch Roy Jones Jr. fights anymore because I'd rather remember him for the Roy Jones Jr. I I remember as a kid as opposed to average ass guys giving him a hard time and that kind of thing so let me know what you guys think Bernard Hopkins is he a dirty fighter is he a legend um again for me I I was impressed by him he employed the sweet science defeating a much much younger and stronger um fighter and he was actually the underdog from what I hear in this fight so props to B-Hop let me know what you guys think And that's basically it. Until next video, subscribe, comment, or hate. Until next video, Ego signing off.